Hello everyone and welcome back to another Symphony tutorial. Today's request comes from one of my YouTube subscribers and he asked if I can show you guys how to create an open food menu item key. If you have a question about Micro Symphony, please go ahead and leave it in the comments below. Or better yet, go ahead and join our online community where you can interact with myself and other fellow hospitality enthusiasts. It's open and free for everybody to join. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. And now let's go into EMC and take a look at programming an open food menu item key. And really quick, I wanted to remind you guys about our online learning platform. You can find training and support for Micro Symphony at simsupport.online. I'll leave a link to it in the description below and a coupon code as a special thank you. And with that, let's get back to the video. Okay, so here we are in EMC and the first thing we need to do is program our menu item classes. Now I do have my menu item classes program here at the enterprise level, but yours might be programmed at the property level or even RVC. So make sure you open them in the proper spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and open them up. Now I do have a section for open items here in the very beginning. Uh, you will want to either if you have one programmed, we can work with it. Or if you need to add a new one, go ahead and add it. I do have separate ones for open food, liquor, beer, wine and everything because we will have itemizers for each one. So if you don't have one, go ahead and click the insert key. You can either use a template or go ahead and add it from scratch and I'll show you how to program it. So I'm going to go ahead and open my open food item here. And the reason why I have the open food, liquor, beer, wine is one for tax purposes in case you have different taxes for each type and also for sales and discount itemizers. So for tax, I have food tax for it. Uh, I don't have to mess with any of these. Now the privilege group might be something that you want to take a look at. The options here are zero, one, two, and three. The privilege group basically zero will mean everybody can use it. One, two, and three means only the managers can use it. So you have like a floor manager all the way up to like a general manager. Now, if you want everybody to use your open food items, leave it at zero. But sometimes I see this added as one. So it requires a manager authorization. That's because places don't usually like to have open food items show up in the reporting just to make sure they don't get misused for anything else. Moving down to sales itemizers, make sure you select the proper one. So in my case, food, discount itemizer, also food. For this, I do have the add service charge here. So just in case I add any gratuity, it will apply to this item as well. I'm going to jump to a couple of these other ones. I'm going to leave them as the defaults and I'm going to go down to the print class. So if it's a food item, probably all kitchen would be a place to print it. So it prints over there. If it's somewhere specific, like if you only want it in the grill or saute or salad, you can select that as well. Everything else is as default. Next, we're going to jump into the option bits. Now, option bit number one is the one that we actually want in order to have an open priced menu item. So if it's on, it will be open priced. If it's off, it will be preset. I do also have option bit number five enabled, and this is for reference entry required. Since this is going to be a general open food item, we do have to enter what exactly it is. So this will also prompt a keyboard for us and we can enter whatever information it is that we are charging for the open food item. And I also have option bits 7, 8, 12, 13, 18, 26, 27, 38. And if I scroll all the way down, I don't have anything else. As far as condiment groups, obviously it's not going to have any required condiments. For allowed condiments, you want to allow all of the condiments for it. So what I do have is I have these all modifiers and all prefixes here at the bottom. If you don't use this style of condiment programming with all mods and prefixes, then you might want to check all the boxes here or, you know, in order for it to allow the different food condiments. Nothing in the forced condiments or fixed priced. And if I take a look at this one, open liquor, for example, the only difference will be where it goes. And I would say the print class will most likely go in the bar. So select the print class, sales itemizer, and once you're done, go ahead and save. And now that we're done with our menu item classes, we can go ahead and close that out. And now that we're done with the menu item classes, next we'll have to add our menu item itself. So we're going to go ahead and open up menu item maintenance. And again, this one is also available at multiple levels in Symfony. So make sure you select the proper level and then open up menu item maintenance. And now that it's open, I'm going to click a quick search to populate my database. 
And I usually program my open food items here at the top. So I create a category called open items and I have the same ones as I do for menu item classes, so open food, liquor, beer, and everything. So if you need to add one, go ahead and click the insert key here, enter open food, the record position number, and go ahead and add it. And we're going to go through the configuration really quick. So for major group, pretty straightforward. This is a food item as family group. You can have it as entree. I also have it as reporting group one. And then we're going to jump into the definition records. So the name will stay the same. The only thing that we have to be very careful here is the menu item class. So we'll have to assign the open food menu item class, the one that we created earlier. So if you want to change it, you just click here on the ellipses. And this is a list of all the menu item classes we have designed. And you select the open food one, click OK. For the main level and sub level, you want to make sure that all the boxes are selected for this item to work properly. Same for this one. And where are we going to show it on the screen? Now, you can either choose to have an open food screen or open item screen lookup, or you can hard code it to the screen itself. I'll show you how to do both so you can choose whichever one works better for you. And the last item we're going to visit is the price record. It does need to have a price record, although it is going to be zero. This is going to be open priced. So it's going to ask us every time how much it will be, but it does need to have a price record present in order for it to work properly. So now that we're done with the menu items, I can go ahead and close this. And next we're going to go into page design. I'm going to open up page design and I'm going to go to my transaction screen. I'm also going to change this aspect ratio to 16 to 9. So there's two ways we can add these to the screen. We can either do an open food SLU or screen lookup. So if you want to do that, we can take a look at one of the sides here. So I have food prep. Now the problem is I have two, four, six, eight, ten. Now you can make these smaller just to make sure that they all fit. Usually you fit about eight of them, but you do have the tab item height here, which I changed to 72. So I can probably fit another one. If you want to add more than this, make sure you decrease this height. Otherwise, you won't be able to click them on the workstation. They're not going to be, it's not going to be enough space here. So what I'm going to do is add tab item and then I'm going to click yes. So now I have this tab 11 here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this to 70 just to make it smaller. So now they can fit and you can save this, test it out and see if you need to change it and make it any smaller. So for the tab item name, I'm going to say open items. Now, the easiest way to add a screen lookup here is to copy an existing one. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on this, right click, copy and then go to open items and then right click paste. Now, the reason why I'm doing copy paste instead of actually adding one from scratch is because this already has all the formatting I need. So it has the colors, it has the style layout. So if you do want to add one from scratch, you can go here to other and then you can do sales slew. So this will add a fresh slew here. And then this is going to be a menu item screen lookup. And then the one that I want to select is the open item one that I added, which is this one open food. And then I already kind of have this set up. So it's a tabbed grid box. Actually, I don't even need the tabs for this one. I can just say grid. So the tabs are good if you have a lot of items there because you can filter by name. But since this is only going to contain like five or six of them, I can have them like here and you can select the row. So this is a six by six. The buttons are good enough. They do flow horizontally. So they go one, two, three versus vertically. They would go this way. One, two, three. They sort alphanumerically. I have the use sort priority here, auto paging keys are here, and I increased the font size to 22. So just so these buttons are a little bit bigger. Now I can go ahead and save this and all of the items because I added them on a screen lookup will appear here and we can go to the workstation and test this out really quick. Okay, so here we are at the workstation and as always, we're going to click a quick update just to make sure we get all of our changes and we're going to sign in. I'm going to begin a fast transaction. And I can see all of the tabs. Like I mentioned, you can usually see only about eight of them, but because I made them smaller, I can actually see more. So I have my open items tab here and they will be uh, organized alphabetically. I can select my open food 
and I'll be prompted to what the amount will be. So I can say $10. So you do have to use the decimal point here and then click OK. If you just enter 10 and then hit OK, it's only going to enter 10 cents. So be careful with the decimal point. And now we have this uh, reference entry required. And this was option bid number five that I entered there. And because it's an open food item, it's good to enter this information here. So I just enter test. And now we have our open food item for $10. And we can do the same for open beer and wine and whatever else we want. We have open beer, food, liquor, miscellaneous, beverages, retail, and wine. And this works perfectly with the screen lookup is here. And let's go back to EMC and take a look at how we would hard code the button to the screen. And we're back in EMC in page design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little bit of space here and I'm going to make this flu a little bit smaller and we're going to add a new button in order to hard code our key. Now you can add a button on the screen here. You can add it on the bar on the bottom. You can add it in a different area of the screen or even on the sidebars. It doesn't really matter. It depends on how often you use it. If you use it very, very often, you can add it in the quick part here. If not, just add it in whatever area of the screen you want to. So what we're going to do in the function here, I'm going to select menu item and then I'm going to click the little arrow and I'm going to select open food. This is the one that I added before and we can actually click generate legend. So it populates the open food name. So this is the menu item that you will call on and this is the legend. We can click the little arrow and we can select the color for it, whichever one we like. We can choose this mustard color and then we can also increase the size a little bit. So you can see this font size is a little small. I just checked the box. I can make it maybe a 24. That's going to make it a little bit easier to read. So then we have this button here that's going to call our open food item. If we want to create the rest, it's super easy. All we have to do is right click copy right click paste and we got another copy of it and then we just change it to open liquor generate legend again and we can also change the color so this is a good part about having individual hard coded items you can change the color you can make them bigger smaller you can have a bigger one and a smaller one right next to it if you want to you can just grab the edges here and make it a little bit smaller you know you can design it as you want to versus if you have a slew, they all have to be the same size. You can make it change color a little bit by using priority styles, but you don't have the level of control that you get when you use hard coded buttons. And now I'm going to go ahead and save and let's go back to the workstation and test our new buttons. And here we are back at the workstation. We're going to click a quick update as always and go ahead and sign in, begin another fast transaction. We're going to go back to the open item site tab and we do have them here on the bottom. I can go ahead and push the button. Don't forget the decimal point there and then enter the name and then click OK. And the open liquor will work just the same and enter the name and then hit OK. Now, obviously, you don't want to have the hard coded button and the slew up top here. Either choose one or the other, but I just showed you how to do both. So you have the option if you choose one or the other. And that's it for this video on how to add an open food item key. If you did enjoy it, make sure to leave it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you didn't do that already. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.